What's happening guys, Greg Hap here from Menagerie Studio and welcome back to the After Effects Basic Series. Today we're going to be getting into some basic compositing and learning some new and exciting techniques. We got a lot to cover because we're taking this shot and turning it into this. Let's get to it. Okay, here we are back in After Effects and just a real quick organizational tip to start off. Uh, as you can see in our project panel up here, we have some assets loaded in, uh, but let's say we wanna just throw those into a folder. If you just click, drag, highlight, bring it on down here to this little folder button, release, it'll create a folder. We can go ahead and name that assets. Then the little drop down arrow will bring us right into there. Just a quick little organizational tip, I like to keep things tidy. So let's go ahead, start a new composition and get right into it. So we'll name this composite 1920 by 1080, 25 frames a second for us and we'll leave it at 10 seconds. Okay, all right, now we got a blank composition. We'll start out with dragging our background into our timeline. So we're just gonna work with a photo, but we'll show you in a little bit how we can spice that up and actually add some movement. Let's go ahead and we're gonna just drag our walking shot. You just got this nice lockdown shot of a guy walking along here. So we'll find a good spot in this video to start. Uh, right there seems pretty good. And if you wanna trim any layers, you can come right here to the beginning, you'll get this little arrow. If you click, hold shift and drag, that will bring it right to wherever your playhead is and we'll snap it right into place. Then we can click, hold shift again, bring that to the beginning of our timeline. So first things first, we're gonna mask this guy out. Uh, so if we just make sure we're selected on the top layer here, come up to our pen tool, We'll go ahead, zoom in, holding the space bar to bring up this little hand here so we can move around the comp. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut him out. Perfect, done, looks great. No, just kidding. All right, so let's go back into here and if we just double tap M, We'll bring up all the mask properties. And as you can see, this mask is going to need a little bit of adjustment just to stay in line with where he's walking. So we'll go ahead over to our keyframe, stopwatch, go ahead and click on that to create a keyframe. Come ahead a little bit, just when he starts to go out of the frame, make sure the whole mask is selected. We'll come up here to our selection tool and just grab the whole mask and push it over. Now you'll see it'll Kind of follow him here. Feel free to make any additional keyframes just to keep him kind of in the center of this mask here. So we'll just keep on scrolling through. This will just be some trial and error just to get it where it needs to be. Keep on going. And just bring it right to the end here and that should be pretty good. All right, so now let's get into adjusting some of the feather and expansion of the mask just to blend it a little bit better. So in our case here, we'll try just bringing the feather up to, we'll say 100 pixels. You see that really feathers it out a little too much, but if we grab this mask expansion and just expand it a little bit here, you'll see that's really starting to give us what we're looking for. It just kind of blends that in. So we can actually take this layer and just move him to where we want him, where we think he looks good in the frame. So I'm just gonna kind of match the horizon line up a little bit here. Okay, so now that we have our guy positioned right where we want him in our final shot here, we'll come up to effects and presets and we're just gonna type curves and we're gonna try to match these two shots a little bit. So we'll drag this curves layer right onto our man walking shot. And this is going to really depend on your footage, but here we're just gonna try to bring a lot of the green out of that, match it to the red hue of the sand, and just make it look like it belongs. So we'll go ahead, come into the red channel, and just start by boosting that up. 
boosted up pretty good. Now you can see we got quite a bit of yellow going on. So to combat that, we'll come in and just take the green away a little bit. The blue is really shining through now, starting to look a little purple. Okay, we're definitely getting closer to what we're looking for, but another quick way to really help out is to come back over to the effects and presets and type tint. Drop that on, that'll just make it black and white grayscale, but if we look at this right here, amount to tint, that's at 100%, which means it's you know fully tinted, <laughs> it's fully grayscale. So we'll just play around with this value. We'll bring it down to say, let's try 70. That might be a little much, we'll try 60. As you can see, that really helps to just kind of blend him into the frame a little bit, especially when we're working with kind of a desaturated background. Um, yeah, so we'll just keep adjusting the curves here until we get exactly what we're looking for. All right, now that we have both of these shots matching a little bit better, we're gonna try to add a little bit of depth to this shot. So here we have some fog footage. If we just drop that right on top, you'll see we got some nice just rolling fog, but we got a black background here. So when you're wanting to get rid of a black background, but keep the alpha channel, in our case, that's this fog or this smoke, you want to come over to mode here, and this will bring up your blend modes. And we're looking at the screen blend mode here. And that'll just get rid of that black background, but preserve that alpha channel. So as we can see, this is a little overboard, a little much, it's a little heavy. So that can be fixed a few ways. If we want to click on this fog layer, hit T to bring up our opacity. We'll just bring this down to say 60. That'll definitely help to just kind of blend it in a little bit. But let's say we want to take this fog and put it kind of up by these mountains up here or kind of just where the fog is already showing up in this picture. If we click on the fog layer, come up here to our pen tool, we can actually mask this fog layer. So we'll just kind of mask out a general area of where we want our fog to be. So we'll go ahead, close this mask off. As you can see, we have a really hard edge here where the fog is ending. So we'll just double click on the M key, bring up our mask properties, and we'll just feather that real nice right there. That's looking good. So if we click on our fog layer, control D on the keyboard, control or command D, that'll duplicate our fog layer. And we'll just grab that layer and move it up toward these mountains. Now you see our mask needs a little bit of adjustment here just to get rid of those harsh edges. So we'll just click, we'll just adjust this to where we want it, right up near these cliffs. And just to be safe, so this fog isn't just repeated in a different spot. A quick and easy way when you're working with duplicates of layers like this is just to rotate it 180 degrees. That'll essentially flip it. Then if you just grab it, bring it back to where you want it. Now it'll be a lot harder to tell that it's a duplicate. So that's looking pretty good, but you can definitely tell that our background is just a still picture and partially because none of these clouds are moving up here. You know, if this was an actual moving video, <laughs> my God, I sound old. If this was an actual video, the clouds would, you know, be moving as the duration of the clip goes on, yada, yada. So let's go up to our assets and grab this cloud footage. We'll just drag it right on top. So in order to composite these clouds into our background footage, we'll come right over here to this little eyeball and just toggle that. That'll basically hide the layer, but it's still there, you just can't see it. So as long as we're selected on our cloud layer, we come up to our pen tool and we'll just draw a rough mask around the sky here. We'll come up and around and just close that mask off. Quick and dirty mask. So now when we toggle this back on, we see our sky is up here. So again, we'll just double tap M, bring up our mask settings, and we'll just feather this out. Mess with the expansion a little bit. 
adjust our mask. And just like that, we have some moving clouds in our shot. It just really sells the effect, makes you totally forget that you're even looking at a picture. But we can take this one step further. And how we're going to do that is with an expression. Now expressions are one of the most powerful tools you can use in After Effects, but we're just gonna dip our toes into it and do a very basic expression that can be applied to almost any footage you're working with, especially when you're working with a still picture. So to start, let's click highlight all of these layers, right click, come up to pre-compose. We'll just name this full composite. These settings are good for our case, click OK. Now you see what that did was take all of our layers and put it into one single layer. So this, everything is just how we left it, but it's now in one layer. So if we come over here, click P on the keyboard, that'll bring up our position. Now to get into the expressions, if you hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, it brings up your expression panel here. Now we're just gonna start off with one of the more basic expressions, but a powerful one, depending on how you use it. If you just type wiggle, parenthesis, in here you can enter two values. We're gonna go with two comma one. We'll just click right off of that. And if we just play this back, we have a little bit of subtle movement. And that can be adjusted if we just click back into here. Let's say we wanna come back in and go two comma two. Click off, we'll play that back. It really depends on the application of what you're going for, what kind of scene you're trying to set up. See, for me, in my opinion, for in our case, this is a little too much movement, so I'm gonna just take it back down to two comma one. Click off that. But as you can see, if you look toward the very edges of the frame, it's starting to creep in a little bit. It's starting to show the transparent background. And that's because basically what this is doing is taking our clip here and just kind of wiggling it around the composition. So in order to compensate for that, we'll come into the scale using S on the keyboard and we'll just bring this up to 101. That should be good enough to keep those edges in line. Okay, and one step further, while our scale property is up here, we'll just add a slow, subtle zoom. So if we click on the keyframe for scale, come all the way to the end of our timeline, and we'll just bring this up to say 105. Just a real subtle zoom. This should give you a great foundation of some, of some more advanced masking as well as some very basic compositing. And that's really where After Effects shines. It's the compositing. It's taking something that's, that's kind of drab and turning it into something fantastical. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have created or if these videos were helpful to you, it'd be great to hear some feedback. Let me know what else you'd like me to cover in this After Effects effects basic series this is how i learned after effects just searching youtube finding videos tutorials and just kind of learning back in the day when i was a when i was a young lad so it feels great to be able to kind of return that favor help some people learn some after effects so please if you're new here consider subscribing for more videos thanks again for joining me and uh, don't forget to turn those post notifications on so uh, you can find our videos easily this has been greg from menagerie studio i'll catch you in the next one